blood pressure, the major reason is the body is in distress. Do you follow me, ma'am, Tanya? Yes. The body is in distress. That's why we get hypertense. That's why our body's hypertense. That's why we have high blood pressure. Now, uh, stresses, emergencies can come in from many, fa- from, from many directions. Sugar is one of the major ones. Food toxicity, another major one. Emotional and mental stressors, another major one. Oxy- a lack of oxygen, hypoxia, maybe the major one. In fact, that's my personal favorite remedy, quick remedy for lowering your blood pressure, is open up, uh, is uh, breathe, relax the body. Well, breathe and relax the body. Both. Sit in a, sit. Do you have a blood pressure cuff, Tanya? No, I don't. Well, you should get one if you have high blood pressure. They're only like, you can get a real fancy one for like 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, and it's a digital one. On, just go to Amazon. And you should take your blood pressure if you have a history of hypertension. Not so much because you want to know it every day, as much as because you want to have an element to, to, uh, to leverage biofeedback. Biofeedback is where you actually control your biology. Biofeedback is where you control your biology by watching your biology. By watching your blood pressure, you learn to lower it. So you put on the, uh, you take your blood pressure and go to the drugstore wherever they have a blood pressure cuff, and take your blood pressure. Then spend five minutes deep breathing, and then take your blood pressure again, and you'll notice that your blood pressure will drop. If you don't want to spend the five minutes to deep breathe, which is great, and we should all be doing it, uh, sit in a hot bath, take a hot shower. Both of those will lower your blood pressure. Now, which sounds better to you, a prescription drug or a hot tub? You know? Uh, Right? Why do you think we all like hot water? Why do you think everybody likes Mm -hmm. to sit in the hot water? You're activating the relaxation nervous system. You're lowering your blood pressure. You're fighting cancer. You're anti-aging. It's the best thing for your skin for for anti-wrinkles. Plus, it's anti-inflammatory. Hot bath, hot tub. Uh, arginine's great, though. I don't, I don't, I'm not dismissing your nutritional supplement. Other new, important supplements for, bro, for lowering blood pressure, magnesium, potassium, um, vitamin E, coenzyme Q10, anything that helps you handle sugar, and especially the B vitamins, and also omega-3 fats. Those are all great supplements for helping lower your blood pressure. Between reducing toxicity, especially sugar, relaxing the body, making sure you're breathing, staying away from problem foods, and then getting on a good nutritional supplement program like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which is loaded with all of those nutrients, and your arginine as well, you can lower your blood pressure. It should be one of the easiest things you could do without a doctor, without drugs, certainly without drugs. You guys, the most toxic and deadly of all the prescription drugs, or at least among them, are the anti-hypertensives, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers in particular. All right, Tanya? Okay. I have one more. Yes, ma'am. I have a, I have a, um, I have a ankle that they think they have little um, tears in it and a ligament, so it's swollen. And uh, they want to give me a drug, a couple drugs. To do uh, what? To, to stop the swelling because they feel like the swelling is, um, if they can stop the swelling, it will heal faster. Okay. Well, what are they going to give you? And um, oh, I have no idea because I am not a drug person. I do not want to take them. And well, so I can't. Uh, I don't know. It's probably a diuretic. I'm guessing, or maybe an anti-inflammatory of some kind. Uh, probably yeah. an anti. Not a diuretic. Probably an anti-inflammatory. I, I take that back. And, and so, what should I take? What well, you can take some natural anti-inflammatories. They don't work as powerfully as drugs. Your omega fats or, or omega three fats are natural anti-inflammatories. Vitamin E is a natural anti-inflammatory. Magnesium is a natural anti-inflammatory. Staying away from sugar is an anti-inflammatory strategy. Uh, let's see. There's tons of them. Plant flavonoids and carotenes that we've been talking about. Those have anti-inflammatory properties. Be careful with the sugar, of course. Beyond tangy tangerine is overall anti-inflammatory. MSM might have some anti-inflammatory properties. There's zillions of them. But I don't know. That, you, know you may have some kind of acute trauma where the inflammatory process is really getting in the way. So I can't answer that question. Uh, if they're giving you an anti-inflammatory drug, it may be that that, that might be something that you need. Uh, remember, we're, when we talk about nutrition and, and staying away from prescription drugs, I'm not talking about acute emergency situations. I'm talking about long-term chronic situations. If your okay. case is an acute emergency where the inflammation... Yeah. It, then you may need an anti-inflammatory, and I can't speak to that. If you could tell me the name of the drug, maybe call back tomorrow or send me an email. I can give you some more information. I can send you an email. That would be great. Yeah, send an email, ben at ksco.com. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Tanya. Have a great day. Good hey. to talk to you. Okay. okay. Hey, Lee in New Jersey, what's up? Ben. What's going on, man? Um, not much. Doing pretty well. I just had two quick questions. Okay. Um, one was about the osteo effects. So I'm on the okay. Healthy Star Pack. Um, Good for you. And I seem to, I seem to get some uh, a little bit of the runs from the osteo effects. 
I assume it's the magnesium citrate. Um, I've had that problem in the past. Did you? You're not absorbing yeah. then. It typically means you're not absorbing. You sure it's not the BTT though? Oh, uh, the BTT I've been sipping throughout the day. Like you said, okay. I'm kind of thinking of it as my IV. Okay, good. And then on the uh, on the Osteo FX, you're doing a capful at once. What did you say? You're doing one capful, and it gives you the runs. You're saying one one spoonful. One spoonful, and you get the runs from that. Just that small amount. Yeah, from the okay. It's like 300 milligrams, I think, of magnesium citrate. Uh, is that what it is? 300 milligrams per spoonful, or is it per capful? Capful is two. T- is t- a capful is two tablespoons. So you're oh, talking. I, t- I don't take the capsule. I just take the. Uh, no cap full. A cap. A cap full, not capsule. Uh, but a cap full. Cap full is is an ounce, and I think the supplement facts say a, a, a third of an ounce is a serving size. So that would be about two tablespoons, two teaspoons. I'm sorry, two teaspoons full is a serving size. If you're taking one teaspoonful, that's already on the low side. So that tells me you're not absorbing. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're not absorbing all those nutrients. So what you want to do is a couple things. First of all, take your OsteoFX with food, and that'll support the absorption. And that might help okay. you with the runs, okay? Instead of on an, if you're taking it on an empty stomach, take it with food. <coughs> Excuse me. And take it with, uh, with uh, your ultimate enzymes yeah. and meals. And maybe throw in some lecithin. Lecithin's important for fat absorption. And sometimes those minerals like the magnesium and the zinc and the calcium that are in the, excuse me, in the osteo-FX, if they're not getting absorbed because of some problem with bile, you may have, that's, that can lead to diarrhea or the runs. And lecithin is like a bile supplement. You can also do bile, for that matter, bile salts. Okay. But those are in your ultimate enzymes. Okay? Okay. And one last question. Uh, sure. As I'm, fig- as I'm figuring out my, my uh, allergies, triggers, I mean, I, I did a blood work test, but it only included a certain amount of food. So... Um, as I'm figuring it out, can I, how do you feel about like 25 milligrams of Benadryl just to kind of reset me so I can try it again, a different food? To reset you? I do have a reaction. Yeah. It'll hide the reaction's the problem. It's an antihistamine, so it's going to hide the reaction if there's residual once Benadryl. I, once I know there's a reaction, um, to kind of just send me back to a base level. In other so words, once you find the, food. once, hang on Lee, once you find the reaction, you're saying take the Benadryl just to yeah. get... Oh, yeah, I wouldn't, you know, if you want to calm the reaction down. One thing, a couple things with Benadryl. Number one, your liver has to process it, although it is a mild drug. It's certainly not like a prescription drug, or like a beta blocker. But uh, the second thing is it makes people drowsy. So 25 milligrams may take the edge, you know, may kind of dull your senses during the day. If you did it at night, it'd probably help you sleep. It might, then again, you might wake up groggy from the Benadryl. Lee, I got to go. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for, uh, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll continue talking inflammation, anti-inflammation, and fatty nutrients on The Bright Side. Have yourselves a beautiful, wonderful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.